good afternoon. Sorry for being a trifle late this afternoon. Thank you for joining me for my Facebook Live. My name is Jenny McCormack. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm based in the, uh, Brackley, which is the market town in the centre of the UK. So this week we've had a pick and mix week where we've been mixing things up and um, putting different things together. And one of the things that occurred to me yesterday was a technique that I haven't used for a long time and that is the kissing technique. And it's nothing to do with keeping it simple or anything else. It's a specific stamping technique that allows you to kiss one stamp to another to transfer some of the pattern from one stamp set to a different stamp. So I hope that makes some sense. Hi Monica and Tracy, thank you so much for joining me. So interestingly enough, the reason that the kissing technique was uh, or evolved really was to we had a lot of plain stamps so solid images which are great for stamping with um, but not they didn't have a great deal of pattern on them sorry about the state of my fingers <laughs> I re they are clean but they're rather stained with shaded spruce so what we had were a lot of solid stamps, but not a lot of texture. And so this technique was designed so you could transfer some texture, for example, this wood onto other stamps. Now, when I went hunting through my stamps, I realized the majority of our stamps now already have built in texture. And in particular, this um, sort of 3D effect where the, where the um, ink is laid out. And so, and here's another example, um, sorry about the light, with these leaves here. So I realised that we don't have the kissing technique very much because all of our stamps are really well um, formulated that you don't need extra texture but having said I would do the kissing technique um, I found this set that I'll be able to do it with and I do have an idea of something else that I could do um, which is using the reverse of this jar so this is a solid stamp on the reverse um, so try and using that with the same technique to see whether it works so just to give you a demonstration of this, um, for this design, you need two stamps. One is your solid stamp and one is the pattern that you want. So I am going to use this um, plank effect, but this could be anything. So it could be um, the buffalo check, for example. I might leave that one out to give you a sample of that. So what I'm going to do is ink up one stamp and then stamp it onto the other stamp before putting it onto the paper. And the, the name kissing technique came up because you're kissing one stamp onto another. So let me just take this layer off here. So I haven't used this stamp yet. I have used the wood one. So I am just going to um, just stamp this off first. Let me grab an ink colour. I'm going to choose Pretty Peacock. I'm hoping this is a dark one. It may not be. Hello Mika and Monica and Tracy. So let's just try with this on. This is pretty peacock ink and this is my stamp. So I'm just going to ink it up on its own first. Yes, that's a nice coverage of ink. 
these days I really do need to um, re-ink a lot of my ink pads. So there is the solid stamp inked up. And if I just stamp it on here so you can see. Okay, you see our nice solid image. Now that's the first time I've used that stamp, so it will be slightly patchy. I am going to... Um, I was going to find I just brought it in a oh there it is sorry my chamois to just to wipe it down to make sure it's nice and clean in between so this time what I'm going to do is ink it onto the ink pad and then before I stamp it, I'm going to pop it onto the wood grain. Okay, so there's my clean stamp. I think I'm actually going to do this this way round to get a nice coverage so I can see that it's all inked up. There we go. Ideally, this works best with quite a deep ink because you want to be able to pick up the difference. And then what we do is we stamp it onto here, like so. And what does that does is it transfers some of the ink from the stamp onto here and vice versa. So now if I stamp this one, I should get a wood grain image built in to that stamp if you can see that and the clever thing is you have another design here where you've got the outline of the stamp so if I just get another block you can stamp that one too let me pop this onto here just to show you the effect. So here I've got the banner shape stamped onto the wood grain. Okay, so that's that effect. And on this one, I've got the wood grain stamped onto the banner, if that makes any sense. Okay. Now this could be anything you want it to be in terms of pattern so let me just clean that one down because obviously we could have just stamped and cut that shape out but i could for example use some text as part of my design so or you could, I mean, you could use this, um, actually, this leaf image as well would work quite nicely. Now, the only problem is these stamps are already detailed, but we can do the same sort of thing. Let's just change ink to get a different effect. how many of you have ever tried the kissing technique in the past it used to be very popular so let's do the same thing so let's ink this one up so this is old olive which is very very light see whether it's got enough ink to um, pick that up. Hopefully it will have. So there's the old olive and I can stamp it onto here. That's the kissing part. Now you can see that a little bit more detailed maybe. Okay, let's try this. There we 
go. So there you can see the detail of the leaves. Now this itself is a distinctive stamp with the leaf um, colouring in it. But you can see the effect that you get. And you can do the same thing with this one. I'll just stamp it down. I won't bother mounting it or anything. Just for you to see. I'll say, excuse the state of my fingers. And obviously, because this is a banner shape, and only a highlight of um, the leaves, you don't see all of the information, all of the detail, I should say. So that's what's known as the kissing technique. So I did think what I could try with jar of flowers is to use this reverse, because this is a solid piece, and try and stamp that onto a pattern. A bit like I started on Monday, um, I think it was Monday when I started my pick and mix design so let's try this and see so I'm going to put this image up so that this is a completely flat stamp I'm going to wipe it down okay and dry it on my leg <laughs> why not okay so I'm thinking we could either use I'm not sure I need to use the um, I quite like this because it to me it would look like a bit of a Chinesey sort of vase if I had it in blue so that's what I think I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is stamp it and then probably punch it out. But it's a bit of a trial and error to see. I'm thinking Misty Moonlight would be a good colour to try. Okay. So this is our Misty Moonlight ink. So my plan is to bring this stamp back in. Just wipe it down so I've got it clean from the other design. And then take my jam jar And I'm going to ink this up. <laughs> I knew that was going to be too sticky on the misty moonlight. Okay. So the problem I've got is because this is quite a sticky ink. And it hasn't got so much space to catch hold of because it's only on the outline. So make sure your stamp is well attached before you try this. Let's give this another go. If it doesn't work, I might need to Let's do it this way around. It's probably better. There we go. So I've got a nice blue coverage of this, like so. And then I'm going to pick out which bit of this design I want. So this could be any size of stamp. You could also have quite a small stamp. And if you can see through it, you could then place it in different places. I can see there's a little bit of um, dust on there. But I'm thinking, let's have it going upways like that. like so. So stamping on that element of the other stamp like that you can see a bit of the pattern arriving and let's have a look and see. There we 
there we go you can see that so my stamp wasn't particularly clean which is why you can see those little bits there so let me do another one try that that looks a bit cleaner Oh, let's do it around this way and obviously I've got the design on here as well but it's not really going to show you the shape of the jar because obviously this is only part of the stamp so I am just going to wipe this off if it was a much larger image you would end up with the outline of the jar on it but obviously this is only going over part of it so let's do this one again. I said I'd do it that way around. Okay. I've obviously got some bits on my ink pad because I can see them in, in the light. Okay, let's try it again. Let's pick up this bit here at the bottom. Like so so you can see that design coming through and this is just a case of having a go and playing as I said it used to be really um, good there we go when we had a lot of bold single stamps that had no pattern on them but looking through nearly all of my stamps the majority of these stamps have even this one because I thought the love of leaves would be a good one um, but even the love of leaves has got this patterning in it already and therefore it doesn't take to the kissing technique as well so let's punch this one out and have a look and see what it looks like So this is the jar punch, like so, and this is lightening up a little bit. There you go, so it's quite effective, it reminds me of the boho indigo set actually. It's got that sort of inbuilt um, pattern to it. So you could do this with a vase, um, you could do it with any shape for example. You could use this one and stamp a sentiment over the top if you wanted as well. So I think what I'm going to do is choose the best one of these and just use, I'll tell you what I might use, Inspiring Iris which I talked about the other day. Here. Um, because I could do this um, one here or here with the blue um, flowers stamped so let me grab a piece of card and I think I'm going to put this onto um, a note card and envelope try not to transfer my ink everywhere I'm in the middle of recording all my class in a box videos so I've got Christmas cards around either side of my desk <laughs> so I do apologize but I'm working on a small little space here so I'm going to cut this at four and a half by three this is the size of our note card with a an added border <sighs> trying to pick that up and move it so which is the better one maybe that one so it does look a bit um sort of chinesey doesn't it 
and my thought was to use Inspiring Iris. one will fit. Hmm. I might need to have a look. Let me to make it bigger actually on the card. And let's grab the inner iris flowers. So these two here. So let me just cut another piece of card. Hello Jane. Thanks for joining us on this rather dark and murky Friday afternoon. So we're doing an old fashioned technique called the kissing technique. I don't know if you've come across that. So I'm going to make this actually slightly bigger. Just going to make it slightly smaller than the size of a note card. I could make it larger and put it on a main card, I suppose, couldn't I? But I'm hoping that will do the job. So here's our decorated vase. And, yep, my irises will fit in there. So what I'm going to do is pop those onto a block. <laughs> Nothing's quite the right size today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's one of those Fridays, isn't it? So I'm actually going to stamp this in the misty moonlight. So I'm going to ink this one up. Now I haven't used this particular stamp, so I'm just going to stamp it off first. Such a pretty stamp. So what I'm going to do is just stamp it sort of at the top of here so I can put my vase over, like so. Voila. My vase is going to go like that and then I'm going to use a lighter blue so I'm going to use balmy blue which I happen to have to hand for the flowers and then um, some green for the stalks so these are the two flowers and I'm just going to have a practice on here. Perfect. So I know this is a very light balmy blue. But it will be enough. I can always stamp it more than once. So just lining that up approximately there we go like that and then there is this other one here that does the stalks and the the bulb head I think you could also use this for bulrushes or just general um, greenery in my opinion so let's just grab that one out so this pattern here would have worked as well we wanted to have a um, a border around our vase. Let's just swap this over. There we've got our pieces. I'm just going to bring in a pair of pizzazz. So inking this up. just not that you can see but I'm trying it on my little samples there bringing this in so 
blotting for that green ink in the side. And then just looking through this to get it approximately in place. There we go. And then this one is going to go onto there. What I might do is put some thread around the front of that. So I've got some white thread like so and I've got there's a little thanks here which I might put in I really want it rounded at the top um, wishing you the best might be too small let's have a quick look Yeah, so what I might do is put it on a piece and um, put it across the vase, although it seems a shame to cover up the vase I've just created. Let's pop some string on the back of here and pop this on with some dimensionals, which have just disappeared from view. So got to attach that string with a dimensional to keep it in place. Pop two dimensionals on like that. It's a lot easier to tie the string once you've got it in place. So. Let's move it over very slightly. Like so. And to tie this. go slip these ends off voila and then I'm just going to on this odd piece here stamp wishing you the best which I'm just going to cut off and put across the bottom of there so I'm just going to use the same colour of ink. Wishing you the best. It's a nice font. I do like that particular font. And you could cut that up with scissors or you could trim it or you could use a die cut piece. What I might actually do is make this two small pieces. because I'm covering up all our hard work here. <laughs> Never mind. The main thing was to show you the technique. There we go. See if it'll let me do that. So I was wondering why I hadn't seen it for so long, and now I know why. It's because all of our stamps have now got inbuilt um, design. There we go. I 
just going to pop those on with a little bit of glue and then pop that onto a layer. So I've just added a bit of glue on the back. I might even do it at an angle just for a change. There we go. So just to show you what I'm actually going to do is try this stamp just really quickly, this design stamp on that banner. So I think that might work quite clearly. So let me do that really quickly. This will get mounted onto a note card. Um, so this is staying, this is being inked up. I'll use Misty Moonlight as that's the hand, even though it's quite dark and inky. There we go. So, ink that onto there. like so, if you can see that now. And then, I mean, it might be too fine for you to see on the scratch paper, but let's give it a go. There we go. So can you see, you've got the line added into there. You can see it left on the stamp, and also obviously you've got some ink onto this one here. So there we go, that is the kissing technique. So ink up your solid stamp, stamp it onto or kiss it against a pattern stamp and then stamp that onto your um, finished piece of card or card that you're going to subsequently cut out. So I hope that's been of use to you. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to join me this afternoon. I shall go back to my um, class videos and catch up with you on Monday. Um, so that will be Monday at 10 a.m. next week for a different series of my Facebook Lives. Oh, hi, Karen. I didn't spot you just joining me. I do apologize. Um, so yeah, kissing technique is what we've done today. So um, do hop back and have a look. As I say, it's something we used to do a lot when we had a lot of very plain stamps. Um, it would work, for example, um, with this, um, this is actually the inside of the butterfly, but the reverse of the butterfly um, would work, but of course we have all these um, inbuilt patterns, so um, it's not quite the need that they used to be. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a nice weekend. If you're joining me Oh good, Tracy, give it a go. If you're joining me for my class in a box, I've got one class tomorrow, that's the Christmas one, and then one class on Sunday, and that's the Fun Folds class. If you're interested in those, by all means, leave me a comment, and I'll happily send you that information. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you for joining me. Take care, stay safe, look after each other. Thank you. Bye-bye.